For the first minute, you want to pull your viewer right into a world where survival wasn't theoretical. It was daily life. This story begins with a paradox that always grabs the attention of serious history buffs. Medieval Europe possessed a wood preservation method so effective, so long-lasting, and so indestructible that later governments restricted or outright banned aspects of it. And the reason wasn't magic, superstition, or some lost alchemist's recipe. It was practical chemistry born out of necessity, perfected over centuries, and eventually regarded as too potent, too environmentally disruptive, and in some cases too dangerous for common use. The method shows just how resourceful pre-industrial craftspeople were. Long before pressure treatment, before creosote plants, before copper-based preservatives, carpenters, shipwrights and bridge builders already had a technique that kept wood solid for centuries without rotting, warping or falling prey to insects. And if someone today wants to preserve a tool handle, strengthen outdoor structures, weatherproof bushcraft gear, or build long-term homestead fixtures, this old method still works better than many modern commercial products. Understanding it brings you closer to the engineering mindset of the past, where simple materials and clever knowledge were worth more than any factory. The method begins with understanding the medieval obsession with fire hardening and tar saturation. Medieval woodworkers learned early that flame alone could transform wood, but only within limits. Fire hardening spears was routine, and archaeological finds show tips that survived hundreds of years. But the real breakthrough came when they paired controlled charring with tar saturation. This produced wood that resisted rot, moisture, insects, marine borers, and fungal decay, to a degree so extreme that some structures treated this way remain intact after 800 years. The core principle was simple. Lightly char the wood to open its pores, then drive natural tar, pitch or resin deep into the grain so it forms a chemical barrier. Tar fills the capillaries, blocks oxygen, resists water and suffocates biological threats. The char layer protects the tar beneath it and reduces ultraviolet breakdown. This was not random experimentation. Shipwright guilds used it as standard practice. Scandinavian stave churches were preserved almost entirely through tar saturation. Rural communities treated fence posts, grain store supports, and well frames using the same method. In cold regions, the technique was so vital that tar production became a controlled resource, and later a restricted one when forests began to suffer from overharvesting of resin rich pine. By the late medieval and early modern eras, governments noticed that tar-rich pine forests were being stripped faster than they could regrow. In Scandinavia, tar pits consumed entire stands of slow-growing pine. In England and parts of France, regulations limited who could produce wood tar, because its demand in shipbuilding had become overwhelming. In some regions, peasants were barred from using large tar kilns because they threatened strategic timber reserves. The method itself wasn't banned outright, but aspects of tar production, high resin pine harvesting, and even the use of certain tar-treated timbers in urban areas were heavily controlled. In modern times, restrictions tightened further when health and environmental standards classified some types of pine tar, especially tar derived from incomplete burns, as unsuitable for certain uses. The key point is that the technique wasn't abandoned because it failed. It was restricted because it succeeded too well, 
People used it everywhere, and the ecological cost caught up. A scaled-down modern version is fully achievable without violating environmental rules or relying on industrial compounds. If someone wants to preserve tool handles, hiking staffs, outdoor posts, or wooden stakes for long-term fieldwork, they can apply the same principles with controlled steps that echo the medieval method. Start by selecting a hardwood or pine piece that is thoroughly dried. Gently char the surface using a small propane torch or campfire embers, turning the wood to create an even blackened layer without burning it through. Wipe away the loose charcoal with a cloth. This step mimics the medieval practice of opening the surface and creating a protective outer shell. Next, heat natural pine tar or a mix of pine tar and raw linseed oil until the consistency becomes thin and spreadable. Medieval artisans heated tar in clay pots or iron kettles. Today, a small metal can set in hot water achieves the same effect. Brush or rub the tar onto the charred surface while the wood is still warm. The heat helps the tar penetrate deeply. Many homesteaders repeat this process twice, letting the wood rest overnight between applications. Over days, the tar cures and hardens. This approach produces wood that shrugs off moisture, fungi and insects. A fence post treated this way can last significantly longer than untreated lumber. Tool handles become resistant to cracking in extreme seasons. Even small items like garden stakes or traps gain durability that recalls the old methods used for centuries. What stands out is that medieval craftspeople achieved long-lasting preservation without manufactured chemicals. They relied on thermal modification, natural resins, and an intuitive understanding of moisture exchange and biological decay. Their approach wasn't mystical, it was empirical survival knowledge, and studying it today reveals how pre-industrial societies balanced chemistry, craftsmanship, and environmental awareness long before such concepts had names. For history enthusiasts, this is the kind of technique that demonstrates the continuity between past and present. For survivalists and off-grid builders, it is a reminder that durability doesn't always require modern materials. Sometimes the older method is superior precisely because it is simple, repeatable and field-proven over centuries. If you found this breakdown valuable, and want more deep dives into the forgotten techniques that shape the world. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, share this guide with fellow enthusiasts, and help keep this knowledge alive.